These hacks could not have come at a better time. I am starving. I know we always go into these with like a lot of optimism, but I really hope these are good. That's right, everybody. We're testing more food hacks that I've seen floating around the internet. And I thought, hmm, that looks good. I want to try that. So if you like food hacks as much as I like food hacks, make sure you give this video a thumbs up so I know. And check out the other videos that we've done where we've tested so many <laughs> food hacks. So now let's dive into the first one, um, which is a very interesting way to eat eggs. Not just eat eggs, but like make, prepare, put, to assemble. Serve. Serve. You missed my overhand serve. It wasn't good, even in pretend. Worm is incredible. Is that volleyball or tennis? It's obviously tennis. So I have some boiled eggs here that were in the fridge. They've cooled completely because we're going to do some stuff to them. That sounds really ominous. I mean, it's ho hopefully it's delicious stuff. We need a plate. We need bread, we need avocado because I'm a millennial and we do love our avocado toast. Like I know, I know, ho ho ho, but like it's, it's truly is magnificent. Let me know in the comments, are you also, are, we, are you a fellow millennial? Gen Z, Gen Xer? Why is mine always, oh aren't we Gen Y? Why are we called millennials? I'm a Zennial. You're not a Zennial, Christopher. Stop trying to make that happen. Christopher is doing this at me. <laughs> like you're an X-Men. Technically, Christopher is a year older than me, but only, I mean, most of the year, actually. <laughs> so we're just toasting up some bread, you know, as you do on a Saturday. Have a coffee, avocados. It's gonna be dicey, folks, but um, we're gonna roll with it. All right, oh, I just realized my nails are terrible. I'm testing a nail product for, I guess it would have been last week's video, I think, maybe, on Rach Loves, and so I haven't taken off my old nail polish, so I do apologize. Just look at this one nail. That one looks good. Can you please be good, please? Oh, look at that, that's beautiful. That is gonna taste terrible, though. Winter avocados, I tell you what, they are not great. You get good avocados year-round, I am very jealous. Are you done? No? Right. By the way, I should, I'm gonna link my toaster for you because I get a lot of questions about my toaster and sometimes I'll get like a whole slew of like Instagram DMs being like, I just saw your video on your toaster. What is that? It's a breville. I'll, I'll link it down below in case you're interested. I think we got it as like a wedding present. Is it a wedding present? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It has a button that says a little bit more. I felt so fancy when we got it. Okay. I just wanted it like a little bit, just like a little slight crisp. Now we need butter. I'm going back over here. Why don't I grab the things I need and put them all there? But no, I won't do that. We gotta start with butter. Butter is always first on toast. Now I'm gonna take some avocado, little slices. I'm going to cut myself. No, I'm not. Positive thinking. <laughs> take them out. Hiya! Should we attempt to artfully arrange? I feel like we should. Why not? I very much did not cut this avocado in half, but it's fine. Come on, Rachel. Artful, artful arrangement. It's my new brand. Artful arrangements, Michelle. And now, now finally we get to the eggs. Here's a nice one right here. I'm sorry for anyone who is a um, boiled egg aficionado and you are um, very good at peeling these, you're gonna be really mad at me and I'm sorry. I see your comments, I hear you, but I don't eat boiled eggs enough um, uh, to care that much. I always try and get as much of the <laughs> shell on there as possible in one fell swoop. I do the same thing with clementines, it's always a challenge. I mean, it doesn't look like it's all one piece, but like, that's, I mean, it's not great. <laughs> Now it's hack time. We need this because we are going to grate an egg on our avocado toast. Apparently it's just, it's the best way to eat it. You get like a really nice, like um, just in terms of the, the texture, it's supposed to be really nice, easy way to like distribute the egg. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. We're going to try it because I want to know if it actually tastes better than like slices of egg. Because you know, sometimes like the inside can be well, I guess it's just me doing a bad job with boiling eggs. But the inside doesn't taste as good and it's like overcooked sometimes. Like, I don't know. Okay, I want to see if this works. I mean, it's it's definitely shredding. Whee! Oh no! Oh no! Clumps of egg. Oh! It's fine. It's fine. 
not my best work, but it's not bad either. I'm really getting the egg everywhere, which I feel like is just part of artful arrangements with Shell. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, it's a lot more work <laughs> than just hacking it up, you know? All right, that's enough. That's, that's, that's enough. It's a little bit more floofy, except for these bits that aren't slicing. Next up, mandolining an egg with Shell. All right, now to this, we need to add some pepper. Lots of pepper. And some um, flaky salt. I will link the flaky salt that we use. It's the best. Mm. And then last but not least, the video that I watched, she put like some hot sauce on it as well. And I feel like that is an excellent idea. Apparently I like to do polka dots. I really tried to do like a, you know, but um, that's not in the cards for me. No, it's intentional. All right. Ta-da! Christopher, do you want to come and try this? Ooh, ah, so pretty. I call it fluffy eggs. It actually does kind of look cool. <laughs> right? I shouldn't say it like I'm surprised and very artistic. I, thank you. It's supposed to taste better. And like, this is what the people are doing on the internet now. Wow, if you can't trust them. No <laughs> offense, people, all of whom are on the internet watching this. <laughs> Sometimes they're good. I want this one because it has more sriracha on it. I would have gone like a Franks or similar. You don't like my choice of sriracha? I don't know yet. Well, we're gonna find out then. You're usually right about these things. Oh, well, let's see. You know what I'm gonna say. I put so much salt on it. Did you? I did! You can put more on though. It's right over there. You know what I should have done in retrospect? Hindsight 2020. I should have also grated the avocado <laughs> just for funsies. Made it all the same. Mm, I don't know. I feel like that's an overload. Like, I personally like it like this. This is pretty good, but is it- Is it is better? It, is it better than scrambled eggs on avocado toast? Or just like hacking into an egg. No, it's good. You know what? This would be good if you want to add more protein, but you don't love the like texture or the scent, like the taste of egg. Because I don't taste a lot of egg. That's true. Yeah, it's very light. Mm -hmm. And the presentation is nice. Restaurant. It's a, it's a nice um, texture thing. It just, it's, it's, less obvious like biting into a boiled egg, you know? It is more work. I wouldn't do it a lot, but um, there you are. Does work though. For a pretty brunch? Yeah, yeah. pretty brunch, yes. I wanna go to a pretty brunch. What mimosas? All right, now that I've <laughs> eaten all of that, let's move on to something that is definitely not new. This is something that is making its way through <laughs> the internet, but I feel like this isn't like a, like a new thing. But it is, however, one thing that I have not tried before, and that is this um, way of making popcorn in the microwave. <laughs> Stay with me, because I know there are so many ways, a plethora, you might say, of ways that you can make popcorn in the microwave. However, this very nice lady um, made it in just a paper bag, because I know a lot of times the popcorn that you get in the bags have a lot of, they're coated with a lot of chemicals, and so it's not, good for you and I know that's coming from me who eats cookies every night. But you know, if this works, this is like a lot healthier of an option from a like lack of chemicals kind of way because I'm gonna start by putting in a tablespoon of butter. So this into the bag, right in, right at the bottom. And then you take kernels, quarter to a third of a cup. This time I'm doing it over here, over the sink, like a smart person that knows that I will spill it. Put that in. Oh, still managed to spill one. And then of course, salt, which is, you know, crucial to any popcorn. I don't know, like that. And then you seal it up. And we stick it in the microwave for about two minutes. I don't trust the two minutes with my microwave, so I'm gonna do like a minute 30. And now we wait. Okay, popcorn can. You can see at the bottom there, <laughs> all of the butter has melted. So I'm assuming now the, the popcorn is, you know, popping in that melted butter. I'm hoping anyway. We'll find out though. <laughs> Wait. I hear popping. I don't know why, but popping popcorn brings me such joy. Just the sound, you know? No, no, it's just begun. 30 seconds more. It is two minutes. Okay, let's see what happens. I initially took the bag and I was going to take it out of the microwave at the two minute mark, but then you can see through the bag because it's so greasy. Um, 
and it seems like most of the kernels didn't pop. And like my kernels aren't old either. Just clarity. So I did it for a little while longer until I thought like this is probably not gonna go any longer. And um, yeah, we're gonna see what these look like and what they taste like. Like look at all the kernels. There's so many. Also pretty sure I charred all the rest of it. Awesome, well let's see. Good. But maybe interrupting the cycle after two minutes and like just even picking it up. I didn't take it out of the microwave, but maybe that sort of interrupted the cooking process. And so next time I'll kind of just leave it in, do a full four minutes, but monitor it the whole time so that when I'm noticing that the popping is sort of coming to an end, I'll just take it out. Oh, maybe that'll make a difference. Cause like, I feel like a bunch of these are a little bit charred. Like, I don't know. That's not, it's not quite charred, but it's, it's getting there, you know? Maybe I fried it. Or is that all popcorn is? Just fried kernels. Anyway, <laughs> it isn't as buttery as I was expecting either. Just as a heads up, I like buttery popcorn. It doesn't taste plain but it's not super buttery either. I don't know. I feel like this is one I'd have to like fiddle with a little bit. All right, now I wanna go on to the hack that sort of started it all for me for this video. And I came across this video and I was like, I, like I have to try this. There was no way around it. I was gonna try it whether it was with you or not. This was happening. And that is taking an apple and taking out the core with, drum roll, this contraption. That's right a wine bottle opener. One of these guys with the, <laughs> the hands. It's supposed to take out a core beautifully. It looked so good. So we're gonna attempt it. Put it in like so. <laughs> the hands every time get me. Just, just ready, you know? No. Christopher, I think I'm doing this wrong. I need hops. So this is supposed to take out the core of an apple. Okay. Okay, so I have it in, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And then we put it, uh-huh, uh -huh. right? Yep. The more you turn it, the less likely, like you're just churning it up inside so there's nowhere to grab purchase on. Okay, but how is it going to go all the way through to pull out the core? Oh, it isn't. The internet lies to people. But if you keep turning it, it definitely won't do it. Can you do it then? Well, it's, um, it's just gonna go in and out now, right? Like you just drill the hole into it. Well, go the other side then. Like it's not gonna work, like in the classic sense. But, <laughs> internet, like... why you do this to me? That was mean. Wow. Maybe if you had like a like a really, really firm crab apple. Oh, like the little ones? I could see that maybe working, but no. No. I'm sad. I wanted that to work so bad. Ugh. So gullible on the internet. People are mean. Why would you do that to me? All right, now on to a hack that I feel like is really gonna divide people here. And that is around bacon. Specifically, crispy bacon. I am personally a huge fan of crispy bacon. Like I need that in my life. It needs to be almost burnt. That's like the level of crispiness I enjoy. Let me know in the comments which team you're on. Are you on team crispy bacon or just cooked? <laughs> Let's go over to the stove for this one. All right, we are at the stove now. Bacon hack. So this particular hack is important for two reasons. Number one, it's supposed to help stop the splatter effect of the bacon. And number two, it's supposed to create this like beautiful crispy bacon, easy, easy cleanup. So I'm excited. So first things first, I'm gonna take my nonstick pan and put it on medium high heat. And then we are gonna add water, just enough to kind of cover the bottom of the pan. Kind of like that. And then this bacon is supposed to be beautiful and crispy. Let's find out. All right, bacon update. Ooh, steamy. The water is now entirely gone. I'm not supposed to add more, I don't think. That's at least what they said in the video. And now I wait for crispy bacon. So far, by the way, no um, splattering has occurred, which is nice. Don't mind me, just spilled a whole thing of water back here. It's everywhere. It's not a cooking video if I don't spill something. Okay, I have bacon here. 
but um, I just spent the last couple of minutes talking to a camera that wasn't on. Having some technical difficulties today with my brain, but okay, the bacon. So you can see it is very nice and crisp. I do tend to like it a little bit more on the crispy side, but I got impatient. But will we get like a nice crispy sound? But like, it's not bad. It is very tasty though. I didn't notice any sort of effect from the water pulling the flavor out or anything like that. So would I do this hack again? Yes, but only if I was doing like two to three slices because I don't have a nonstick pan big enough. So if I was doing a larger amount of bacon, I would probably still do it in the oven. Let me know in the comments which of these hacks was your favorite. Which one are you like the most excited about? And also if you see any other food hacks around the internet that we should try out next time, make sure you leave them down below and like and subscribe. If you haven't already, new videos here every single Saturday. Check out these videos on the side in case you have missed any. And that's everything. I will see you guys all next week. Mmm, that's some good bacon. That's good bacon, I like bacon.